friends, welcome back to another episode of the Brittany Rossi Show. And today I have a lovely guest with me today, someone that I've known for a little while in the online space. And I'm so excited to share her with you guys. Her name is Lindsay Maloney. And Lindsay is a transformational business coach who specializes in helping visionary female coaches to create and transform their businesses. And so she also hosts her own podcast, Book Your Dream Clients, and she's the creator of Stand Out Coaching Academy. And so I love that. I love women helping other women. Um, sisterhood is something that I am huge on. I think we need that, more of that, but I don't want to um, take up all the time introducing her. I want to allow her to speak for herself. So thank you so much for being with me today, Lindsay. Welcome. Yes, thank you for having me, Brittany. I'm so excited to be here. So um, would you just really quickly, in your own terms, explain to us what it is that you do with your transformational coaching business? Sure. Um, I am a rapid transformational practitioner, and I'm also a business and success coach. So I basically help women start and scale their coaching businesses, but I'm unique because I help them do it in two different ways. We work on the inside so the outside can shine. Um, we can have all the strategies and tools, the best coaches, mentors, programs, but nothing's really going to work or you're going to hit a wall if you don't work on the inside. So I have best of, best of both worlds and that's my passion. That's why I am so excited to share it with the world so I can help more women because I really believe in the ripple effect. If I can help you, you can help someone and it just keeps continuing. And I think that's, I think that's why coaches are such a blessing because they just want to help people. And I think the more we can help, the better the world can be really. I love that. It's so encouraging. Um, and I, I, I'm in total agreement with the ripple effect. The longer I've been in this industry and in this online space, I am seeing that uh, impact and it grows. It's like that domino effect where the first domino may not feel like it has a ton of weight or power, but by the time you get to the end, science says that last domino has great force behind it, right? And so that ripple effect is such a very cool thing to do. And so something that I, I don't always talk about, but I like to bring up once in a while is um, brand values as a business. And you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what would you say are the values that really drive how you do everything in your business, everything from the copy to how you frame your packages to how you work with your clients? Do you have any brand value words that you stand on? Um, heart centered really comes up when I do anything. I'm not a person who wants to automate my business and just have everything working for me so I can go on vacation and blah, blah, blah. That's not what I want. Mm -hmm. I want to ha make an impact with people and I want to get to know people that I work with. Yeah. Um, I think there's just so many courses and maybe coaches out there who are working with people who don't want to quite get so very close with them because they feel, I don't know, it just feels, I've had that experience and it doesn't feel right. So mm -hmm. I want to have that connection with people because I believe people are craving connection, um, especially in this online space. Like we're sitting in our offices all day, we're on the phone, we're doing things and, but there's nobody beside us or around us except, you know, people who really don't get what we do. So oh, creating yes. connection with clients and students is so important to me because I believe connection creates confidence mm -hmm. and confidence is what really holds a lot of people back from their full potential, you know, cause they, they want all of these things, but yet they don't quite want to go for it quite yet. Like they're holding themselves back. So what they're going to do is they're going to find that they're just in this, this, um, comparison. Um, I'm not, I'm not good enough game. So they're going to just stay in the creative mode. They're going to stay doing all the busy work, downloading free stuff and just play around mm -hmm. because they don't have confidence and they might not even know that they don't have confidence yet. So I believe connection will create the confidence yeah. and will help foster that. So that's kind of my main driver, just being heart centered and connecting with people. Beautiful. So simple, but very clear about what you're about. And I think that's really important for listeners to hear that it doesn't have to be all of these brand values and anything like overwhelming. Um, it is just being clear about what you're about, right? And what you're not about. Um, so that's really, really helpful. Thank you for sharing that. I'm curious to know, and I think our listeners too, would be interested to hear more about how you became 
a success and rapid transformation coach, right? Um, so tell us a little bit about your story and how you got into this. Clearly you're a heart-centered human being and you care about making an impact, but how did you get started in this? I got started in this nine years ago. I had um, lost 90 pounds after having my first baby. And um, I just to really shorten the story up, I decided that this was pretty cool. That's a pretty cool achievement. I didn't do anything crazy. I just did, I ate healthy food and I moved. And this, and you saw, I saw so many people around me that were just trying all these crazy things and nothing was working. And I thought, mm -hmm. boy, if we just simplified things and really just got down to what we wanted in life, then we could make a huge impact. And so I just kind of went with it. I knew I wanted to do something more with my life. I knew I wasn't just like this nine to five, clean the house mom. I wanted to do more. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but some of us just want a little bit extra. Totally. And so I just decided just to go with what was available to me at the time. So I was a health coach for a couple of years and I kind of dabbled in that. Mm -hmm. I would, I got certified as a personal trainer. I had clients coming to my house. I had a, I had a busy, busy schedule and I live in a town of 800 people. <laughs> and so, and I had a lot of people coming to my house in the afternoon just so I could work out with them. And then I decided like, this is not what I want. I got pregnant with my second and getting up at five in the morning to get ready to bring clients down to my basement to work out was just not feeling amazing anymore. So I right. decided just to hit the pause button and I took a year off from running any kind of business online. Um, and then I decided, I, I think it was maybe Gracie was probably a year. I decided to get back into it and I just kind of weeded out the things that I didn't like. I was, you know, as a mom, especially after you have maybe more than one kid, you are really in tune with yourself and what you want more. And I decided I don't like the health coaching anymore. I don't want to train people. I don't want anything to do with that anymore. I just didn't like the arena. So mm -hmm. I decided I'm just going to do the business stuff because I really love business coaching and I love all of those little things. So I just decided to go with it. I didn't wait until it was perfect. I just created a website. I got a coach immediately mm. and I just listened to her. I was, I'm always coachable. I always have a coach and it just went great from there. Um, it took a lot of time because I have, now I have three kids and I have, I still have a full-time job. I work from home. But I was okay with the amount of time that it was going to take for me to get to where I am now. Now I have a six-figure coaching business where I have a signature program. I work with clients, but I only work a few hours a day. And then this past summer, I added another thing to my credentials and I became a rapid transformational therapy practitioner because I wanted to help people on the inside with legit tools. Mm -hmm. And um, that has been such a blessing to me and to so many clients already because I'm helping my coaches and clients from the inside out. And I can just see the transformation with them being just healthier, not only just coaches, but healthier moms, wives, friends, everything. So it's all just kind of come full, full circle. When I was growing up, I always wanted to be a teacher or a nurse, but I never felt like I was smart enough for some reason. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't, I just went into, I just went to school for business. And I, and when, now that I look back, I'm like, this was just all just grooming me mm -hmm. to do what I'm doing now. I'm it, it's kind of like a hybrid of everything that I ever wanted to do. So yeah, that's how I became who I am right now. And I'm always learning and I'm always interested in, I'm really interested in the mind and how we can make it work better for us. And so we can utilize all of those tools in our business. I think that that's really helpful to hear people's stories. I love listening to people's stories about how they got started because for me, especially at the beginning of my journey, I always felt like I was missing something. Um, like there was this little piece of the puzzle that I wasn't sure how to figure out. And kind of like with you, you thought you were wanted to do something, but then you ended up doing something else. And really you wanted to be a nurse or, you know, help people in some capacity, but you really weren't sure what that looked like, right? Um, nursing wasn't the right fit. It was intimidating. And so it was like, well, what can I do? And then when you get to this place and your hindsight is 2020, you can say, I can see how all of these things were working together for my good, right? For my future, for like it had a purpose, all of these experiences, even though they feel unrelated to what I'm doing now, they actually were all preparing me for this moment. 
and it will continue to be that, which is a really cool thing. But so many people, I think, see a lot of the marketing in the online space and feel like I can't break into that, right? They're feeling kind of how you felt about nursing, like, ah, I'm going to do this little thing over here because in my mind, it feels smaller, it feels more accessible. Um, but really what I want to do is help people. And so to hear that that was your process, that it wasn't overnight, um, that you were able to prioritize your values like family and still have the income and impact that you want to have. I think that's very, very powerful to hear. But I want to know a little bit about like breaking into the online space. Um, that can still be a challenge, even if you have clarity, even if you have the credentials. Um, so for me, um, I was very much a lurker in the online space when I first came in, but that's also a reflection of how I'm wired. I'm naturally a wallflower in group scenarios. How was it for you breaking into the online space? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm still the person who I'll just go to the back of the room and look at everybody and then they'd probably go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah um, but for some reason I feel super comfortable online. And I said this on another podcast the other day, I feel so comfortable around people who I don't know, but if I'm around people who I know or have known all my life, I'm like, I just kind of want to go home. <laughs> so it's like, like a weird version of an introvert. <laughs> Yes, introversion, isn't it such a weird way that it manifests online? Like, mm -hmm. it feels different, but there's still the same, same but different, right? Mm -hmm. So did you find in your experience when you started um, getting online, so you said it was easy for you to talk to people, but was it easy for you to be visible in a marketing sense as an introvert? Was that something that was easy for you or was it a challenge? Um, it was so easy because I was in my comfort zone, right? So in, introverts thrive in their comfort zone and more than likely it's going to be at home. And I, I'm at home. I've been working from home for almost 15 years and, oh, I can have a business online and I can be at home in my office that I made myself and everything is mine and I don't have to have people around me and I don't have to listen to anybody oh yeah, this is, this is exactly what I need. Like I'm feeding my soul every single day. That's why introverts are so great at this entrepreneur thing because they can do it from their comfort zone. I mean, anything we do when we're comfortable, we thrive at. So going online is just nothing to me because I, I, this, this is going to come out wrong, but I don't care. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care if people think what I say is this or that. Like I literally don't care because I know I just have so much trust that what I'm doing is part of my life's work. And how can that be wrong? Like, I don't really care if you think that what I do is weird or wrong or whatever it is. It's helping people. It's helping me. It's helping my family and it's helping lots of students and clients. So that is my purpose. That's like my line. That's where I stay. And it's comfortable for me to stay where I'm, where I was placed because I was placed here by somebody who knows so much more than I do about what I'm supposed to do here. I'm just walking it and I'm okay with, you know, the things that I have to do, like, going on social media, putting on a website, going on a podcast. I don't get nervous to do any of that stuff because I know it's exactly what I'm supposed to do. Awesome. And I think that that's, again, like introverts probably feel like I can't run a business. I can't do this or I can't do that because I don't have that in your face, go after him, go get him, like big extroverted personality. So therefore I'm ruled out. That's totally not the case at all. Um, as a fellow introvert, um, I can definitely speak with authority that it is totally possible. And it's a similar sensation, similar feeling of um, I'm in my space. I'm in my happy place. I'm in a place where, um, you know, I feel like I can be me. Mm -hmm. And I think when we have that, there's even room for us to push out of that comfort zone in other areas um, for example, you know what, it might've been easy for you to translate into this online space because of your in personal environment, like your in real life environment. But for some people that still might be a stretch. So it allows us that space to kind of test the waters, right? We'll just put a little bit of our toe outside of the circle of comfort and into like the, I guess, not comfortable zone and, um, and stretch ourselves and grow a little bit at a time. It allows us, you know, to retreat when it becomes too much. Um, so do you have any other insights for when it is ideal 
um, for introverts to kind of push past that, that limit, right? Cause we res- get restored energetically in a different way than extroverts do. Mm-hmm. Um, and running a business is no small feat, especially if you're a mama. So mm-hmm. do you have any wisdom for those of people who are listening who might identify as an introvert, but are wanting to run their business? Oh yes, of course. But one thing I want to say first is we really have to stop comparing ourselves to everyone else. Mm-hmm the people that really stand out to introverts are extroverts. The people who are out there in your face on Instagram stories, talking constantly, um, you like, it almost feels intrusive when you go onto their story, like, Hey, you're disrupting my time. Like, why are you yelling at me? Like they're very in your face. Right. Yeah. You think, well, I could never do that. Or you see people DMing you all the time and you know, with those canned messages and you're like, I don't, I can't do that. You don't have to do that. I don't do that. Um, So we end up comparing ourselves to people who have completely different personalities than we do that are wired so differently than us. So we have to stop that because it doesn't, it doesn't matter what they do. It works for them and their people. Now you have to tune into what's going to work for you. What feels right for you? What feels good and what feels easy, right? So if we decide I want to have this online business And I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I need to do something and I'm tired of just sitting behind the screen. Well, what could you do that would make one little small step forward? And that's going to be you getting a little bit uncomfortable and getting uncomfortable is really great. So I have one of, one of my meditations that we do is that uncomfortable feeling, that sensation that comes to you like, you know, oh, this just feels like I'm not nervous, but it, you know, like when you feel a little off mm-hmm. and you decide to kind of shrink back in your shell, well, what about instead taking that uncomfortable feeling and using it as a sign from God or ho- whoever you want to call it? It's a sign from God that he's saying, let's, let's just keep going with this. Let's, let's see what happens, you know, cause we're taught that those nervous feelings are almost made for us to stop, to like stay safe. But it doesn't, entrepreneurship is not safe. (laughs) We have to just keep like inching forward, eyes looking to the left and the right. This feels weird, but it's like for some reason working and I'm just going to keep going. But the best things happen from getting uncomfortable. And you don't have to just go crazy and take 10 steps at once. You don't have to jump. Like everyone said, like jump before you're ready and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? You have to do what's right for you. Right. You don't have to do what everyone else is doing because that doesn't work. You would never, I would never tell my kids to do something that they're not ready to do. And I think entrepreneurship is a lot like growing, you know, bringing up kids, right? It's everyone is different. My three kids are so different from each other. They walk at different stages. They ate things at different stages, so different. So we can't compare our businesses to somebody else's. And a lot of times we're comparing our beginnings to someone's middle and we don't even know their backstory. So I like it when, like, when you ask me my backstory, a lot, a lot of people that know that I've been doing this for nine years, like it doesn't happen in 90 days. <laughs> it takes a while, but you're going to last that. What do they say? Entrepreneurship after maybe three to five years is really weeded out because it takes that long to get through the crap. Right. And so if we're not comfortable with getting uncomfortable, we're going to just stay really small and safe and behind the scenes and no one's going to see us. Exactly. And I love that. I love that you called out like this comparison issue because it's one thing to follow a framework, right? That has been proven or principles or a certain model, but there has to be room and permission that we give ourselves to say, this doesn't align with my values. This doesn't align with my goals. This doesn't align with my personality and how I'm wired. Therefore, I'm going to say no to it with confidence, with joy, because it's not the right fit for me. And I know that there's something else out there. Typically, I feel like that's the case. But again, when we get into that online space, there's so much marketing being thrown at us, this encouragement that you can do something in 90 days, right? And you're going to have all the money and all the freedom and all the time. But that is maybe true for someone who has nine years of experience. Maybe they can do something in 90 days. They have the team, they have the experience, they know how to write copy, they know design, right? They know their program, they know their ideal client. They know all these things 
that if you're new, one to two years in, you might know it, like head knowledge, that's what you're supposed to do, but you haven't experienced it, right? You haven't learned your audience and you haven't learned your way of doing things. And I think that there's so much wisdom in that because just because we're both introverted doesn't mean that we operate totally the same, right? We have this common denominator that resonates between us, but how you run your business looks totally different than how I run mine. And we're both in the coaching world. We're both in the online space. And I love that you brought that to our attention because it's just, it's such an issue of, you know, this, this success ladder, right? Like if I could just get where she's at, then I would be happy. Or if I could just get where she's at, then I would be successful. So important to define success for ourselves. Am I right? <laughs> like, mm, so. so right. It's so important to, what does it look like for you mm-hmm. and not anyone else? Cause no one's living your life except you. No one's going to run your business. I mean, even if, if you are a coach or a course creator, you can look at all your students. Everyone has such different levels and um, underlining things that they're working with. And yeah, it's possible to do anything in 90 days, even if you're just starting, we've seen that before, Mm -hmm. but it's not common. It's actually like really amazing when that happens. It is. So yeah, I always say to my girls, you guys have to be so patient with your business and we can't rush it. And we don't rush our kids. So why are we rushing our business and mm-hmm. making something super stressful when it's something that we created? Like we're literally, literally creating monsters if we're letting something stress us out. Oh my gosh. I feel like there's like a gold nugget there that needs to be like circled, highlighted, <laughs> underlined. Like we have choice in this. We have choice in how we want to approach business and how we want to approach, um, you know, managing it all. So let me ask you this, as an introvert, when it comes to running your business, um, I'm sure that there's a lot that like pushes you outside of your comfort zone, right? And you have to find time to recharge, time to restore. That's super important for us Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, to get away. And so with being a mom and running a business and on top of all the other life things that you do, what are some tips that you have? Um, And I don't like the word work-life balance. Um, how do you handle the ebb and flow, the cycles and the rhythms of giving more energy to one area of life and then shifting it to the other? Mm-hmm. Um, I love that you don't like that. Cause I feel like it sounds so corporate when people say that because <laughs> I work for a corporate, <laughs> and as an entrepreneur, um, there's like, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> Oh, so it's really tuning into what your body wants. And my body wants to wake up before the sun rises and it wants to go to bed before 10. Does that happen all of the time? Sometimes we're up till 1030 watching the office because we just want to squeeze in one more episode. (laughs) But I always get up before the sun rises because if I don't, I feel very off. So, you know, getting up before the kids and having at least an hour of downtime where I can do what I need to do to prepare for my day because I have a lot of things that are pulled from me. I never know what's going to happen with a two-year-old, a five-year-old, and a 10-year-old. I don't know what's going to (laughs) happen. And so it's really important to tune in. Like I have to be a really early morning person. In order to function at my highest self, I have to do that. I have to have my time. Um, So I do everything that I need right away in the morning, absolutely everything. And then I go in and I work on my business before I have to go over to my nine to five. I work and then I always make sure that I am present when my kids come home from school um, because I don't want to be just dragging around my laptop and trying to carry on a conversation. Does that happen all the time? No, because I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect mom, but that's my, that's my goal. I'm there 100% for those kids when they come home from school. And then I will kind of the, anything that doesn't matter, like, you know, work or anything it's off until the kids go to bed. If I need to check in before I go to bed, then I will. If not like everything can wait until five o'clock in the morning. Like there's no emergency things that need to be taken care of. I don't have email on my phone. I don't have Facebook on my phone because there's just like time sucking things that we don't need. Um, So it's being really mindful of what drains you and what fills you up and then paying attention. Like, okay, so when I do this, I don't feel amazing, but when I do this, I do. So how can I make more of that in my life and eliminate this so I can be a better 
you know, coach, a better mom, a better wife, daughter, whatever it is. And it's all going to come together, right? We can't give a hundred percent to our business because everything else will fall flat. We have to have that separation and just be really fair to everyone else who's in our lives. So, so good. Oh my gosh. I hope that those who are listening are really taking notes because she is just laying down some serious gold. <laughs> like, serious gold. So that is awesome. And I think that that's a brilliant place to press the pause button um, because I certainly want to invite you to come back and share more of your wisdom um, and more of those gold nuggets. Um, so let's pause here for today. And I would love to ask you, is there an inspirational quote that um, you kind of keep in front of you? Maybe it's just something seasonally, but is there a favorite inspirational quote that you have? Well, I always just, pull from the Beatles because I just love them so very much. <laughs> and I know it's like so random, but my favorite thing is we all want to change the world. And I always thought that I love that. It's not like a quote. It's not like, Oh, that's so inspirational, but it's so true. Especially in this arena where we are the coaches, the entrepreneurs, we literally just want to change the world in any big or small way. And I love that. It's my, it's been my Facebook pay, um, profile thing for years because it's true. It's what I believe. I just want to change the world. And I think that I can do it with my tools that I have. And I think we don't have to be this big inspirational person, whatever comes to your mind first. That's what, that's what works for me. And I always just kind of pull stuff out of my head random. I'm the queen of randomness. So <laughs> I just want to change the world. Love it. And then lastly, um, do you have a favorite business book or a favorite fun book even that you are currently reading or that you would recommend? Yes. I love all books by like Dr. Joe Dispenza because there are, I love learning about the mind. That's kind of what I'm reading right now. And all the, so you, I don't know about you, but when you're on Amazon and shopping for one book and then you see all the recommended books below, <laughs> That's what I'm just going to say. <laughs> oh, and that one, and that one, and that one. <laughs> totally. I'm in that boat right there with you, my friend. Um, wonderful. So thank you so much for sharing that. And also all of the wisdom that you shared. You guys, Lindsay is brilliant. She is so good at what she does. And I'm so honored to have you on the show. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been super fun. Good. Um, if you want to connect with Lindsay, you can find all of her details in the show notes and you can find the show notes at brittanyrossi.com forward slash podcast. All right. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me again. And I will catch you guys in the next show. Bye guys. If you would like to find additional resources or workbooks that were mentioned in this podcast, just head on over to brittanyrossi.com forward slash podcast, where you can find all the episode details and show notes.